We open on cutting-edge science in the 1600s. This is John o. Blackthorn, an English boat pilot. He's like, look at the white sand, we're so fucking close to the Japans. Captain says, you're an optimistic bugger, aren't you? He then decides he's too hungry and stinky to live, so blows his head off. Five minutes later, their boat crashes into Japan. Close up on a sensational pair of thongs. And then John o. gets captured. Meanwhile, Lord Torinaga hangs out with his pet bird. His son is thinking, you love your bird. Torinaga does love his bird. He's so badass, he can ride a horse and hold a bird. It doesn't fly off. Enter Lord Ishido. He's a bit of a dodgy fuckwit. Torinaga rocks up to Ishido's crib, and Ishido is like, since Taiko has died, Taiko means like royal wanker, I think, all you've done is try to take power for yourself. Torinaga is thinking, bugger me, these political bastards are ganging up on me. Basically, for to five blokes are meant to get along and run Japan until the Taiko's son comes of age. But of course, there's agendas and power struggles all over the place. This is your core dilemma and plotline, everyone, so hold on tight. Then I air, Shido has the others on side already to try and get Torinaga impeached. One of his mates is like, this is BS. My boss hasn't done anything wrong. He's a legend bloke. He then sits down and says, sorry, everyone, I got emotional. Let me stab myself. He does thankfully, but overall, it's a very dramatic annual general meeting. Cut to Jono and his stinky, hungry crew being held captive. John's like, this is it, we're in Japan. Now we need to stop the Japanese being friends with Portugal and become friends with us instead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so this is fucked. That's the fella Tadayoshi that stood up for Torinaga in that meeting. Turns out he does have to die for that outburst, and this is his wife, Fuji. Their baby has to die too. So naturally she's like, why can't I die as well? Don't leave me hanging around with FOMO. Oh, and this is Mariko, Mariko? Yeah, she's like, no, 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 no. I've got some jobs for you. Just just put it down. It was it was Yoshi, it was Tadayoshi that fucked up your husband, not you. Got some jobs for you. Got the, let her hands be the last to hold her son. Crikey! Sad Mariko considers religion. Here's another badass. Enter Lord Yabushigi. Yabush. Yabush. Like your bush. Yabush Igi. His men let Jono know that he needs to come and meet their boss ASAP. There's some angry dick tugging first, followed by a golden shower, and then a cheeky decapitation. Classic run-of-the-mill travel stories. Meeting your bush Igi doesn't go well at first because of a dodgy, smug, religious translator just doing clickbait. Jono then goes full rage against the machine and is like, here's me thoughts on the Portuguese religious institution. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yabushigi says, he's got balls, let's give him a bath. Oh, there's Taiko's kid, oblivious to the shitstorm around him. Torinaga seems genuine that he'll be looking out for the kiddo, though. This Sheila is like, why don't you become Shogun, eh? Eh? It's in your bloodline. It's always good when someone says the name of the show. He's like, oh, I know Shogun means legend bloke, but don't worry about it. Not many good vibes for Jono's crew being left alone. One of them is about to get cooked like a crab in a pot. It's not pleasant, but that is the olden days for ya. Rubber dub dub, scrub in a tub, and haircut. Enter Kiku. Literally, she gets entered by Yabushigi's assistant while he watches thoughtfully thoughtfully sipping on tea with a dash of sake. Jono wakes up the next day and instantly damages his Japanese Airbnb. Oh yeah, no, yeah, this is Bushy's bloody nephew, by the way. He talks with his uncle about whether or not they're going to be on Torinaga's side or Ishido's side. And then there's all them Christian Japanese sides to consider as well. It's a lot of sides. Collective bowing because Torinaga's mate Hiromatsu has shown up to speak with Bushy. They squabble over who gets to keep Jono ship with all its cannons and guns as well. Ultimately, Bushy is like, all right, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on your side, fellas. I'm on your side, okay? No worries. No worries. No, what Jono will also be going with his confiscated ship to Osaka. This Spaniard fella who sails with the Portuguese is like, I'm so good. I know so much about Japan. They get shit mixed by Mother Nature on the way to Osaka. Bushy holds on for dear life, yelling, fuck me dead. I never should have left me coast. 
crazy fiefdom. Jono screams, I can bring value to this company. Let me drive, mate. He gets the promotion he requested, gives everyone a roast over their lazy, dodgy ass rowing, and turns the ship into a still stormy, but slightly less stormy direction. Once on dry land, there's a cheeky rescue mission to save Rodriguez from the rocks below. Bushy ends up in trouble though, and thinks about stabbing himself. He doesn't, thankfully. Instead, the fellas throw down an extra rope. Jono then gives a courteous bow after witnessing that gutsy effort. Mariko is going to be the official translator for Jono when he arrives in Osaka. That's what Torinaga wants and says. Rodriguez tells Jono he found and read his personal diary and it seems like Mr. Blackthorn is more than a simple pirate that was captured. According to his data, he's an international disruptor to the Portuguese-Japanese relationship. Mariko, intense close-up. Torinaga, intense close-up. Jono, intense close-up with a camera tilt down to a courteous bow. Episode ends with the stage and the story bloody set. This is refreshing, isn't it? It's a fun feeling to be treated like an audience member with a brain. Remember those? Remember brains? Instead of film and television being all like, no one has any attention span anymore, so let's not work too hard. Audiences are a pack of dumb bastards. Just put this out. No, no, people like to use their brain when watching stuff still. And it's okay to give audience brains a workout. I see why this show is being called a Japanese Game of Thrones. I think that's fine and it's fair and I like the comparison on many levels. The plotting and scheming and power struggles was a core Game of Thrones theme. Loyalty and duty and all of that stuff and it's being executed nicely in this context. Obviously this isn't a fantasy world, we're not in Westeros, we're in Japan. But um, yeah, I don't personally know how much creative license is mixed in with 1600s Japanese history. I just like the idea I can go seek out more info if I want. I'm not a book wanker in this instance. I haven't read the Shogun book. And also, Aussie Man is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to, like Gandalf. So even though we're up to episode 7, like right now, as I'm publishing this video, I thought I'd at least make one review video of the series before it finishes. I may not go back and do every episode as fun as that recap section was to make. <sighs> Ultimately, I love the characters. All right, all right, I love the characters. This actor playing Torinaga has been in a ton of things. He's a super duper watchable bloke. And at this point, I think Torinaga is a goodie. I want to be on his side. I am on his side. It feels like the show may twist and turn a little in terms of who you trust and everyone's intentions. And it might just twist that right at the end. But yeah, that's, that's the strongest aspect. The characters in this series are not blatantly in your face like this is a good guy that you should follow this is a bad guy which of course when you have multiple cultures and religious perspectives it's nice to not fully shit on one being worse or better or another that's more superior or inferior it's layered it's it's mature in many ways i get to use my brain Jono calls the japanese savages the japanese call Jono a barbarian the spanish and or portuguese throw out shade and banter all over the place. I'm not saying that's a good way for everyone to go out and treat each other. It's not a license to go out and start calling each other barbarians and savages again. But the xenophobic bullshit between everyone flying every which way is realistic. It's That's the setting. That's what we're dealing with. So yeah, no one is wholly good or wholly evil. And then the strength is in the characters being humane and curious over each other and how each other lives and thinks and survives in the world. And I don't think that's that's completely original in films like, you know, different cultures learning about one another. But it is where the wholesome enjoyment from this show comes and the growing respect characters start to have between one another. It's good shit. That's, that's the shit that tugs on your heartstrings. There's a backdrop of exploration, conquering, taking resources, deal making, controlling regions. But it's the simple human condition stuff that cuts through strongest and it's well executed in this series. Yeah, like terrible shit of course happened in the 1600s. 
Like terrible shit keeps happening in every century. The show is not glossing over that or sugarcoating anything. And it's great to just have a setting and a story laid out gently before you. Don't panic over subtitles as well. If you completed primary school, you can read the fucking subtitles. And as said, your brain will thank you for giving it a workout instead of watching over-edited, hyperactive, meaningless bullshit. Watch an episode twice if it's confusing. There's nothing shameful or wrong with doing that. Apparently the showrunners are only making this one season, which is badass. I respect that. So I'd imagine this is going to be a mini-series that many people watch a second or third time to reinterpret it and enjoy it from different angles and perspectives. My feeling is that people will discover it in the years ahead and the credibility of this one season will hold strong for ages. I'm super keen to see how it wraps up in the coming weeks. Feel free to make the comments section a spoiler zone. What do you legends reckon is going to happen in the end if you're watching this and if you're not a book wanker and you don't know? And um, yeah. Just thanks to everyone that recommended it to me. And if you're not watching it, give it a go. Give it a go. Use your brain. Give your brain a workout. You'll thank, you'll thank the show. You'll thank me after. And um, yeah, have a good one, everyone. Uh, that's me, Shogun, recap and review.